inmate deaths in Kern County. The system in there is failing. That's what's happening. Concerns over the death toll and the record-breaking amount of suicides. Nobody deserves to die just because they came to jail. What's happening behind the fences at Kern County Jails? If they were doing their job, this wouldn't be happening. We hear from worried loved ones of those behind bars and the man in charge of those facilities, Sheriff Donnie Youngblood. The public makes a, an assumption because somebody dies while they're in custody. An exclusive eyewitness news investigation looking into the problem and the efforts to fix it. We really have to find a way to, to respond to that because it is our responsibility. And the number of deaths inside Kern County Jail stands at 10. That's too shy of the record 12 deaths in 2022, and the year isn't over yet. That number is raising concerns for many, especially for those who are behind bars currently. Reporter Leslie Valle takes a closer look at the data and what's being done at the state capitol to address the issue in this Eyewitness News investigation. 2023 marks a record-breaking year for Kern County Jails. The amount of inmate deaths seen at jails like this one is raising concerns about why inmates are dying at the rate of at least once a month. The Kern County Sheriff's Office is investigating yet another death of an inmate at the Central Receiving Facility. To date, there have been 10 inmate deaths under Kern County Sheriff's Office's supervision, and six of those were death by suicide, the highest number on record. The public makes a, an assumption because somebody dies while they're in custody that they wouldn't have died had they not been in custody, and we know that people die. That's the Kern County Sheriff Donnie Youngblood during an interview Kern following Sheriff's the death of an inmate on October 16th. He said that there are a lot of factors that are involved in maintaining the health of people in their custody. The Kern County Sheriff's Office oversees four jails, Lirado Pretrial, Lirado Justice Facility, Central Receiving Facility, and Mojave Jail, all at least having one death. It's not physical force that's causing these people to die. They come to us less healthy than the people that are in our, in our communities. They're living on the streets, they're, they're just not in, in great physical shape, and so they have a tendency to, to not do well. Although it's common for incarcerated individuals to be in poor health before entering these types of facilities, families we spoke with say it's not an excuse for them to die. Well, we wanted to know what happened to our daughter. And we still haven't gotten answers. This is Irene Rivera's mother. She plans on suing the sheriff's office because she says her daughter died after spending hours in a KCSO holding cell. Her death was later determined to be a suicide. Since 2008, there have been 91 deaths in total. 39 of those were natural causes, 22 suicides. The rest were accidental. Youngblood just acted like, oh, this is just part of life. It's not part of life. He's just trying to blame everything else except for the system. Vicki Collins' husband, Corey, is awaiting trial. He's been locked up since February, and she says there isn't enough being done. The system in there is failing. That's what's happening. This is where Corey Collins is being held at the Lirdo pretrial facility. Now, just this year, the facility has seen three inmate deaths. Two were death by suicide. You think if people would be responsible, a lot of those deaths could have been prevented. I mean, nobody deserves to die just because they came to jail. Corey was in prison for 13 years before his recent arrest. He claims he's being wrongfully detained and retaliated against because he filed a complaint against police. He's facing seven charges, including attempted murder, robbery, and possession of firearms. When it comes to getting his and other inmates' medical needs treated, he doesn't believe staff takes him seriously. Medical attention, it seems like it's always aggressive it's never just like oh man ain't, ain't nothing the matter with you or you just playing and people really be having problems in here he says when they do respond it's too late because i've put in numerous requests to talk to mental health you know just sick calls you know just from the water and you know different things uh and you don't get an answer to like maybe two months 70 days down the road like that's, like, inhumane. We compared Kern County stats to other cities and found that there's some concerning trends. Ventura and Fresno have similar-sized populations to Kern. However, Ventura only has one inmate death and Fresno has five. But when we look at counties with a denser population like Orange, Los Angeles, and San Diego, 
we found they have a similar number of deaths despite the population difference. San Diego jails in particular with 12 deaths this year. And according to their website, only one was a death by suicide. We asked Sheriff Youngblood about the significant number of death by suicide seen in his jails, and he says there are protocols in place. If they're in any way suicidal, we put them in a, in a suicide cell, uh, and they're checked on minimum twice every half hour, no more than 15 minutes apart. KCSO says they implemented a program to help prevent in-custody suicides back in 2020. The goal was to increase communication between medical and behavioral health teams. When Corey here, says like he's see, not currently dealing with part, any mental health um, issues, but his wife Vicky says there have been times when it should have been prioritized and it wasn't. There's something going on and it's very hard for him. He doesn't know if he's going to wake up in the morning. Just to see the mental health deteriorating is it's heartbreaking. It really is. State Senator Tony Atkins of San Diego says the way inmates are treated plays a big role in their health. Her new law creates the role of a director of in-custody death, veil review, increase oversight, and share investigatory reports for inmate deaths. It really errs on the side of the public and families getting information. And so a sheriff or a board of supervisors would have to actually go to court to make a request and justify why they believe the information should not be made public. Because it is our responsibility and because it is the humane uh, way to look at this situation. Vicki Collins told me she has a high hope for Senator Atkins' bill that will be effective by next year. Now, Senator Atkins says it's a start for change, but she won't stop fighting until those incarcerated have appropriate resources. In Oildale, Leslie Vae, Eyewitness News. And if there is a story out there that you would like us to look into, call our Investigates tip line at 869-2929, or you can email tipline at bakersfieldnow.com. Well, coming up here on the news at 5, it's officially the holiday season, how you can help those in need this November.